Good morning. I'm going to copy something from one of my friends. Good morning, beautiful souls. <laughs> we are. We are all beautiful souls. We just don't know it. Um, I Like I said, I'm on a mission. And I don't know how much longer I'll be able to do what I'm doing. So I'm continuing on. My, my main goal is to get these papers out there that I wrote so many years ago. You know, that very first video, the experiment that I was talking about, I was telling you that I wrote a lot and, and sometimes I thought God was talking to me. You know, the Spirit, Spirit of the Lord. It could be the Holy Ghost too because He's the Spirit of the Lord. And through Him, we gain knowledge and inspiration and things that are not even in the Scriptures, you can still gain because you know Him. You know, if you love the Lord... And you visit with the Lord in your prayers or whatever. I mean, I talk to him all the time. I, I, I'm. Some people might would think that's disrespectful. I don't get on my knees all the time. But I'll lift up my head and talk to him. And when I'm in the middle of something and I need help, I ask for help. I just kind of leave it open. I have an open mind to the Lord. And it's a really, it is a comfort. So it's a comforter. I have the comforter. Anyway, it's a wonderful gift. And you can have him, I mean, it's more concentrated with this gift thing. But, you know, faith, you've got access to the Lord. You just need to believe and talk to him. He knows what you need before you ever ask, but he wants you to ask. And even if you don't feel worthy to talk to him, because <laughs> I can tell you there for a long time, I didn't. I didn't think I would, uh, you know. I didn't think I deserved his time for one thing. And, and anyway, the point is we need to realize that he loves us no matter what. And he knows we're going through hell down here on earth. So reach out, reach out and ask for help and he'll give it. Okay. You might not get all the answers you want, but you do get answers. Okay. So I'm here to read another paper. And fight off flies. I um, <clears throat> I always have to clear my throat, move my hair around. I'm sorry <laughs> because the way I do it, I can see me. This paper, okay. What I was doing, I was trying to organize all these papers into a little book. Um, but then you know I put it aside and it never got done, never got done. And it's like I want to get this done before I die. Not that I'm gonna die. But you know what? The chances are I could. And the odds are more because I'm older and all the different things, you know. The odds are against me at this time in my life. However, I know God loves me. And I think he needs me down here to help you guys. So maybe he won't call me home. Okay? I've got too many things going on, too many things starting that are wonderful in my life. I've been waiting my whole life. For this time <laughs> and I sure don't want to leave yet so I'm not saying I'm dying it's just that you never know okay so please take a hold of my stuff I'm gonna this was gonna what I started out with okay this paper that I'm gonna read was gonna be the first paper in my book Besides the one that tells the reader about my stuff. Because that I don't know if that's a title page. It's a synopsis from the from the author. <laughs> but anyway. Um, this, I might even call my book Thoughts Flying in the Wind. Because that's the title of this paper and it's so true. Alright, so I'm going to hurry because I'm hot. <laughs> okay. Thoughts Flying in the Wind. Probably should get that light out of the way too. Let me turn that off. Mm. Okay, get myself situated again. Sorry, this hair drives me crazy. I love hair, but it, I don't like it in my face. Okay, we'll see if I can see this because I turned that light off. So if my face disappears during the video, just keep listening because I can't concentrate on both very well, okay? So thoughts flying in the wind. 
I said, I want to throw some thoughts in the wind. Hopefully they will be received and digested. We could solve many of our problems if we will pull together as one big family. Let us understand and take care of each other. I wish to discuss several problems that face all of us as individuals and affects our nation as a whole. Happy homes. Happy homes affect the adults our children soon come to be. How they live their lives will again affect their children and how they will live their lives also. What they feel affects the way they will interact and react with all of us. Stress is a major factor. First of all, I would like to propose that we are all children of God. The life we lead has a direct bearing on the quality of life we will live. I got to say that again. The life we lead has a direct bearing on the quality of life we will have in the eternities. Life never ending. God is love. Love is another major factor. Everyone is in need of love. With all the stress, how can marriages survive? I ache for the millions of broken homes. The adults of the family are experiencing broken hearts, resentment, anger, pain, and rejection. When under the influence of these feelings, one reacts. Children are innocent victims and pay a heavy price. The love we need begins when we are born. A firm foundation of love and security affects the people we become. Every one of us has a heart underneath whatever walls of protection we have built. You should not judge people as they seem to be. Wonder what might have happened to this person's life that might affect the reactions of this person. Without hope, there is despair. Without love, a person tends to just not care. Okay, I go back. You need to love yourself. Okay. Money is another major factor. Too much money and the lack of money can cause stress. Remember, stress affects how we treat each other. I ache for the homeless and the hungry. I ache for those who have money but no time to enjoy it. Time to enjoy is another major factor. I'm going to fly on me, little turkey. Okay, I'll go ahead. So, I'm going to hair on my nose. <laughs> I'm a mess. So, I interrupted my paper. I'm sorry. All right, this is the last part of it. This is time to enjoy is another major factor. Some people work 10, 12, and 14 hours a day. Sometimes they work those hours six days a week. Those people are never home to enjoy the sh and share time with their families. Many times these hardworking people lose their families because the only time they see their families is when they are so tired and stressed out to the max. All of us are guilty of reacting. If someone treats me mean or unfair, my first reaction is to treat them the same way. Your family should be your most prized possession. Sure, you need to provide for them, but don't forget to spend special time with the ones you love. Love is a special flower that can live and grow and even spread, but it must be fed. Love can die without proper care. Everyone is in search of love. When you find it, make sure you take care of it. And I say good care of it, okay? Love is not just for your mate. Don't forget the little ones you have helped to create. Try not to forget those who helped to create you. Love is what it takes. Do you dare show them that you really care? I don't have a date on this, but it was a long time ago. <laughs> and... It is thoughts flying in the wind, but we do. We need to take care of each other, you know. 
can't just be out there willy-nilly just doing whatever we damn well please and you know have kids and not take care of them and you know just leave them at home while you're out still taking care of your own stuff and you know we don't realize it a lot of times when we start our family but it's a major undertaking and it's a responsibility to raise them children those children are children of god and by you having them here you have procreated with god and he's counting on you to take care of them babies and babies can be old because we're all babies i guess we're all god's children and there are times in life that things are just too stressful and then there's the retired people, you know. Yeah, sure, they're not busy, 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 but, you know. Actually, sometimes you're busier when you retire than you were when you were working. But then, it is better to be busy than sitting on your butt. And this is something I've learned, and this is not to do with religion. Is that you need to get up and move around. You need to get up and do stuff. You need to exercise your mind. You need to... Actually, I think you need to be around people. Maybe... Uh, Step outside of yourself and help somebody else. And maybe you'll feel better about yourself. They say giving brings joy. So let's seek for some joy. <laughs> um, I am going to let go. I talk too much. And I have other papers I need to do. And I have things I need to do around here. Um, try to get ready to sell some stuff. But, you know, I'd rather not. <laughs> it's too hot. I don't want to do it. And I sweat when it isn't hot. So there you go. It's really not a pleasant situation. But we'll do the best with what we got. And that's all we can do. So I'm going to end this for reals. I know I keep saying I'm going to do that. And I keep talking. Because I like to do that. Same thing when I'm on the phone. I'll say goodbye, but then there's more things I want to say, so I'll start talking again. Anyway, again, I love you guys. I hope that you will consume my stuff. Eat it. It's words for thought. Food for thought. You eat my food, and you digest it, and it becomes a part of you. Don't be scared. It's okay. Okay? Only thing I'm giving out there is good stuff. Good vibes and good stuff. So, words to live by. Be happy. Be happy coming to the Lord. Know that he's there for you. And his people down here that are already members of his church, which is his family, they work for him. You know, when you join the family of, the, of, of God, you're supposed to help your fellow beings. Okay, you're supposed to love each other, treat each other kind, and, and help each other out when there's a problem. And don't suppose that everybody else has it so much better than you, because they don't. Everybody has their cross to bear. And I hope you can hear what I'm saying, because sometimes I talk real soft when I'm talking about certain things. I love the Lord. And I'm grateful for this life, even if it sucks sometimes, you know. We just need to realize what we are here for. It's not to drown in our sorrows. It's to find out who we are. And it's to learn everything we can. Because you know what? Here's something for you to think about. Not many people think about this at all. But, you know, we have children and we want them to grow up and... and either be better than we are or at least attain what we got, achieve what we got, you know. And God is the same way. He wants you to grow up and he wants you to experience and he wants you to gain knowledge that you need so that you can become like him. Guess what happens, you know? In the end, when all this stuff is done, it will never be done, but, but there is a, a point where you actually become almost equal with God okay because that's what we want our children to grow up and be good and come be like us so just take that to heart everything's okay
And like I said in a different video, if you need help spiritually and you're looking for something and you don't know where to go, take my words. Go to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You know, that of Latter-day Saints is a, um, a marker in time, okay? It's the Church of Jesus Christ, period. But we're in the latter days. Jesus is coming. He's coming soon. You can tell by what's going on around you. This world is a mess. And it's going to get that way before he comes. I mean, it's going to be bad. Worse than we got it now. But hold to the rod, the iron rod. It will safely guide you through. And just have faith that this life is not for nothing. It is for a lot. And it is for your good. So, treat it as such. Okay? And spread the love. First with your families. Don't go out into the world and be nice to everybody else and come home and be mean to your family. That is not cool. Okay? you got to love them children. And you got to make sure that they know they're loved and that they're um, of worth. You know what I mean? We are worth worlds. If you only knew. Because in the end, if you make it to the top where um, you're like God, you can create your own world. And I'm going to talk about that in a different video. Maybe I'll get off and just do a video without reading a paper. I made a post on my Facebook page because I didn't know if I could do it on here. Because I thought I only could do videos. But I see pictures. So I should go and find that post. I made a post about the Urim and Thummim. And a dream I had, which was a vision. And it was also an answer to prayers. I had been praying and praying and praying to understand. How could God create a world? And how can he do all the things he's supposed to do? And how in the heck are we going to do that? <laughs> it seems impossible. But my dream that I had let me know it's not impossible. Okay? You do the best you can with this life you got. And God will do the rest. And there's a gift. The gift of the Urim and Thummim. All those who enter the celestial kingdom will receive their very own Urim and Thummim. Which is what you're going to create your world with. That dream I had, oh my God. I, I shot straight up out of bed. It was so intense. But I, I had been studying and studying, and, and, and um, I had a lot of the facts. Like I told you, I, you take certain facts and you put them all together, and then, hey, maybe you can learn something else to go with that. <laughs> but that dream, that vision taught me, taught me massive. The point is, you do your best, and that Urim and Thummim that you're given will do the rest. You can create your world with that. And you also know everything that pertains to you and your world through that Urim and Thummim. And the Book of Mormon was translated with the use of a Urim and Thummim. Seer stones, okay? You think about that. You guys think Mr. Satan's got everything going on and all these supernatural things are going on I ain't do do with God are you crazy God is the best magician of them all he is the creator Mr. Lucifer is a son okay he's our brother he just chose the wrong path but also I think about that path because like I said in my papers in order for us to grow we have to struggle and we have to have opposition in all things, even though we don't like it. We have to make choices, and we have to deal with the consequences of those choices. Be strong. Satan is not ruler. I mean, he's having his way with this world, let me tell you. But you reach out to God, and you can fight him off. There are marvelous things coming. You have no idea. Well, it's coming in the end. And it doesn't end because it's just a new beginning. 
a whole different framework of what you're going to do with the next part of your life, okay? This life is the one that's hell. But we're going to make it through this and we'll go on to the next one and it'll be better. In the millennium, the thousand years where Jesus will reign on the earth, Satan will be bound. And all of his followers too, not just Satan. They're all going to be bound so they can't do nothing. They'll probably be put in that pit for a while. Because that thousand years, we are not going to have temptation. We are going to be able to grow without the crap that comes from that little guy on your shoulder telling you this and that and the other thing. Or making you feel like someone's doing something bad when they're not. Or making you drink too much and you go out and kill somebody because you drove drunk. There's many, many other scenarios, okay? And no, I'm not saying that I'm a perfect little girl. Because I was not. But... I know what I'm talking about, okay? And hopefully you'll know that I know what I'm talking about. So take care. I'm going to leave you now. I know I keep saying that. Please overlook me when I say that because you never know. <laughs> I always have other thoughts. So take care.